Welcome to Live at Epifan, Episode 5. Uh, today we have a lot of interesting things to discuss. Um, as some of our graphics have uh, pointed out, this week's show is about NAB, which is a show next week. So I'm going to be uh, talking a little bit about that. Um, I'm George Herbert. I'm Dave Kirk. And uh, I guess today I'll be interviewing Dave about NAB and, and things surrounding that and, and Epifan's interest in that show and, uh, and how we're going to do that. But right off the top, I wanted to talk about, as we've been going through these shows, little upgrades and changes we've been making here in our studio to try and improve um, as we do things and experiment with new things and ideas, lighting and all those sorts of things. Yep. So this week we made some more tweaks to audio. Uh, we're running different outputs from our mixer board into our Perl 2. Um, we're using an AVIO as a video input to our Perl 2. And there's a bunch of information, I think, on our website about how using USB I mean, inputs that, to yeah. Perl 2. Absolutely. Yeah. We're doing that as a flexible input to come from a laptop. Basically, the AVIO HD we're using can take HDMI, DVI, VGA, you know, all kinds of different signals, so it, it gives us sort of a flexi input. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a nice little addition there as well to, to add more things uh, to the yeah. mix. And it detects those resolutions no matter what you're giving it. So exactly. That, that, that was so one of the issues we had previously here yeah. with different laptops and stuff, so it's nice that it handles it. So sort of speaking of all those things, pretty much exactly that setup will be demonstrated in our booth at NAB. Yeah. So yeah. talking about NAB is next week we're there, we're exhibiting there uh, in Las Vegas, which is never a bad thing, especially, you know, in these It's not bad in years. April. It's not <laughs> great in June. But. Um, so what is NAB and why does Epifan want to be there? Yeah. Well, NAB is a trade show for the National Association of Broadcasters, and it's it's a long-running show. It's been going a long time, and we've really just participated in the last little while. You know, several years ago, we would go as participants, and we would check out, you know, what's going on in the industry. It was very broadcaster-focused, and that really wasn't our key market. We served them kind of on the periphery, but it wasn't really what we were aiming at. Um, last year was the first year we actually had a booth okay. at NAB, and we set up, and we demonstrated some of our products, and what we saw was that uh, the whole idea of online streaming is really becoming much more prominent at NAB and much okay. more prominent for the people that attend NAB. It used to be much more for the traditional broadcast, the cable and satellite kind of distribution, right. and now we're seeing a lot more of the live streaming coming so into it. Why are those companies, obviously including ourselves, but why are a lot more live streaming companies going to NAB, I guess? Is yeah, well, I think NAB has really kind of picked up the picked up the ball where others have left off so okay. when we look at uh, other shows like infocom it's it's so broad it, it it takes on so many different aspects it's not specialized enough so although right. although we'll be at infocom and showing our gear there it's really not focused at guys who want to broadcast and stream content that's really right. what nab is all about and what we're seeing is they're picking up that that streaming as a an alternative to the traditional broadcast and so we see lots of guys you know wowza and all the other players in streaming are right. going to this show now because it seems to be the show that's picking up that kind of content so that's interesting is that driven by just those companies deciding to go or is this a shift in market with traditional broadcasters who normally are participating yeah in i think i think it's a bit of both because we kind of thought a couple of years ago that the show's on the West Coast and East Coast, like streaming media, East and West, would be the show that streaming right. guys would go to, and that the you know people wanting to get going in streaming, even broadcasters looking at adding streaming into their traditional broadcast, we figured that would be the outlet for them. Um, that really didn't grow as quickly as we thought, mm -hmm. and NAB has really kind of picked that up and said, all right, we got a lot of broadcasters now interested in that streaming, and they've really you know made that a prominent part of the show to the point where now it's becoming the show to go to for some of the streaming stuff. I mean, especially for the broadcaster guys, but even for others. So it won't right. just be the big broadcasters there at the show. It'll right. be people doing all kinds of streaming. So for us, I guess, if we're going there knowing the target audience is still, I guess, you know, the names from the traditional broadcasting section, but they're coming yep. to look at streaming gear, yep. what sort of our stuff would they use? Well, the whole range of it, actually. Um, so what what we see uh, is the traditional broadcasters are adding social media and other platforms okay. to where they're where they're placing their content, and whether that's live or VOD, um, 
they use our kind of gear, like even the Webcaster X1 is a perfect example where if all they want to do is take content that's already been produced, so they've already got their program right. feed, and they just want to take it and replicate it out onto Facebook or YouTube or some other platform, that's the perfect little box to kind of pair up with all of the regular b broadcast gear. All okay. they need is that program output, plug right. it in, and off it goes. So it's, it's a great little add-on. And it also works really well when they're trying to bring stuff in from the field. So if they've got people out in the field trying to bring content back to the studio, um, having gear like Pearl or the Webcaster just makes that so much easier to get that right. content back. Um, so I guess follow-up from that is you mentioned Webcaster. One of the things that we're going to have, obviously, in our, in our main booth, we'll have Webcaster. Yeah. Um, but we're also going to be in the Facebook Live Pavilion. Yeah. What is that about? Like, yeah, so that's a that's a great uh, example actually of NAB really taking streaming much more seriously than in the past. So you know, everybody was interested in streaming, and you started to see more of the streaming oriented guys coming to NAB. But this year, NAB has kind of gone one step further, and they've organized a pavilion that is just for Facebook Live. This and isn't for, Facebook putting this. No, up. this isn't Facebook. So it's it's an okay. NAB organized pavilion, okay. and they've invited people who are working with Facebook um, that have encoders or other technology that goes with Facebook in order to make use of Facebook Live. Okay. So there are about a dozen vendors that are going to be in that pavilion, and and we're one of them. We'll be showing our Webcaster X1, but it really is NAB kind of really highlighting how important uh, you know YouTube Live and Facebook Live and these kind of platforms are becoming. Uh, even for the, the traditional broadcast right. guys. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that ends up sort of relating to the show as a whole, which is... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I, I mean, all of the uh, participants in that pavilion mm -hmm. typically have their own booth and they're showing right. their gear. It'll be very interesting to see going forward how that develops, whether that becomes something that stays and the pavilion grows and becomes right. a bigger item at the show, or whether it kind of dissipates back to, you know, everybody's back in their booth. I really hope it, it continues and they, they get to highlight some of these platforms. And maybe next year it won't just be Facebook Live. Maybe it'll right. be, you know, Periscope and YouTube and other things as well. So it'll be interesting to see where it goes. I think this is the first year where NAB's really stepped out of the, out of the box and said, let's, let's do something that's very sort of uh, social media platform specific. Right. And we'll see what kind of attention it gets at the show. So is that a... Part of a bigger trend, changes we're seeing in the market, is it traditional broadcasters going down the path of, you know, the vloggers that have been out there, yep. a la Casey Neistat, CNN's relationship, or whatever, yeah, I think, that sort of thing? I think there are two elements. One is, um, you know, we see, we see guys like ABC, um, they're using something like Facebook Live or YouTube, and they're actually putting broad live broadcasts right directly on there. And right. so that's that's fairly easy for them from the infrastructure they have. And they just take it and they put it on live. And people can watch the whole broadcast there. Instead of getting maybe this, you know, 30 seconds or 15 seconds sound bites out of, out of what comes out of the 6 or 11 o'clock news, right. they can see the live content. So that's the first step is just taking the content that they're already producing and making it live. Um, yeah. But the other, as you mentioned, um, is more working with these guys who understand the blogging aspect, right? And really understand how to build an audience through those social media channels. And the broadcast guys are very interested in that. And that's why you see guys like Casey Neistat and others getting together with the CNNs and ABCs of the world to try to figure out what is that next step for media. And I, I don't think they figured it out, but they're taking those first steps to try right. some experiments and say, how do we balance between traditional broadcast and cable and getting on these social platforms and building the audience there and, and serving those two audiences. And I think that's the interesting part and sort of in preparation for NAB and things like that we were kind of looking around at different examples of yeah. traditional media doing these live streams so you know I had that sample up of ABC you know they'll they'll cover a full speech and maybe only take the 10 second sound bite for the six exactly. o'clock or whatever yeah. but if you yeah. want to watch the full one hour thing they're, they're putting those up on yeah it's on there so you can platforms. see it right and and it's there live but it's also there in VOD right so right. if you catch the sound bites on the six o'clock news and you think hey I, I'd like to see that whole speech or I want to dig in and see more about what that was covering it's all there now, right. and that's something that the broadcasters never have been able to do in the past very easily. And, and 
the social media platforms make it so easy for them not only to make it available, but then for people to share it among their networks and say, hey, I'm interested in this. I know my friends will be. Right? And so here in Canada, CBC News, so the, the national broadcaster here, they've been doing their nightly news on some of these social media platforms, both Facebook yep. and YouTube. And right. I have a sample up right now, and, and what I think one of the interesting things is, and is that traditional media is obviously, it's a business, so there's a huge drive for ad revenue, but right. the social media side, the ads and revenue structure is completely different. different. Yeah. So one of the things we found interesting, and the way CBC is kind of addressing things, is, is when the normal simultaneous traditional broadcast is running, you know, during the national at 10 o'clock, yeah. you know, when they hit the, a commercial break on TV, they run old stock footage with a timer, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Yeah, I think it's very cool because this is something that, that you don't get when you're watching the traditional broadcast. So they're giving you their traditional content, which is the news report itself, but then where you would be watching commercials, instead if you're watching this on, on the social media platforms, instead what you get is added content around those stories. And so they're, they're giving you kind of over and above what they can deliver on their traditional network because of the, the commercial constraints that they're operating under there. Right. And I'm, I'm sure that'll change, but for now what we see are these big disconnects where CBC, if you watch it on TV, you get three minutes of commercials. If you watch it on the web, then you get a extended content that's related to the stories they're doing. So it'll be, it'll be really neat to see over the next couple of years how that all changes mm -hmm. because the, the platforms and the, uh, the, the ease of delivering over those platforms right. is really going to change what, what broadcast TV is. Well, I guess it was just yesterday there was a, uh, they released, someone in Canada released a study talking about how they expect very close to a quarter million people to be cord cutters this wow. year. Yeah. So the push to, for these, these media organizations to use social media to reconnect with those people who are cord cutting is, is the obvious path, uh, yeah. I think. And so maybe that's playing a role in the way NAB is shifting and all these other pieces to, to make sure that those technologies are understood and leveraged and, and you know. Yeah, the, and I think the industry is really just taking the first steps there now, right? right? No one knows how all of this stuff's going to play out. Um, but we're, we are seeing a number of networks um, and the big guys really experimenting and mm -hmm. trying out new things. I mean, BBC jumped in a long time ago, um, putting their stuff online and, and being able to, um, to stream it live and see it even sometimes before the broadcast, which right. was, seemed really crazy when they first did that. But uh, what they're seeing is that in some cases, those are completely different audiences. They're not serving the same audience twice. There are, there are separate audiences and one does not necessarily cannibalize the other. So that's really important for them. They've right. got their traditional audience, and if they can grow that audience through the social media platforms, that's huge. Um, well, I think another interesting thing is obviously for years now, we've had some of these strictly online media companies, you know, from the news aspects, I guess I'll put news in quotes, from things yeah. like Young Turks or Alex Jones or any of these sort of fringe uh, organizations that are, that are, they have their audience that they're targeting and they're doing it. Yeah. Or even, you know, YouTube's biggest channel, with PewDiePie started as a gaming channel. I'm not even really sure what he does now, yeah. but he's struggling with trying to understand how these platforms are evolving as big organizations are starting to invade that space exactly. a little bit. Some of these smaller guys are looking at, at different ways of doing it. In PewDiePie's case, he's looking at you know shifting some of his programming to Twitch, which is a purely live platform for the most part, yeah. um, and a totally different revenue structure than YouTube has. Um, so he doesn't have to worry about big advertisers cutting him off in. when he gets yep. in these silly arguments with the Wall Street Journal and all these other things. So um, it's interesting. And, and so I, I think from my perspective as supporting obviously Epifan products, uh, seeing how they're used from one end of that spectrum to the other is, uh, is curious. And I'm actually really excited for next week because I want to learn more about how some of these companies are looking forward at yeah. how they want to use this stuff um, so it should be interesting should yeah be interesting. that's one of the you know one of the the main benefits of us being at a show like this is not only seeing what other companies are doing and where the industry and technology is going but the people who come and visit our booth 
uh, really helping us to understand what what they're thinking, where they're going next, and how they're using our gear today and what they want tomorrow. And it's great to have those conversations, to be able to, to really sit down and chat with them and say, you know, here's what we're doing or here's what our gear does today and here's what here's the way we see some of our users using it. And we get people using our gear in all kinds of ways that we never thought um, it would be used and it's it's fantastic so these shows are great for us to be able to really connect with with our users and be able to to share ideas and and see where they think things are going so I think next week um, as part of this big experiment f with this live show and of course at NAB we're going to be doing um, this show uh, our weekly yeah. show from NAB uh, in some form we'll probably do a number of other smaller streams we did that a little bit at ISE in Amsterdam back right. in February. Yep. We actually got a lot of interest in it. I'm just playing some clips from that and some other stuff we put together. Um, it worked really well. Uh, there's obviously yeah. challenges, and one of the reasons why we do this show and why we want to do this from the floor of NAB is we get to discover some of those challenges that and potentially customers are going Absolutely. to run into. Absolutely. And at ISE, we really kind of did it very last minute. We said, hey, we got a camera, we got a <laughs> webcaster, let's, let's do something out of the booth. This one will be a little more planned, but it'll still have that same, you know, on-site spontaneity mm -hmm. and, you know, you can only plan so much when you're in a live event and there's people in the exactly. booth and you're trying to just get things out. So it'll be fun to try it and see, see how well it, it comes off. But uh, based on what we were able to do at ISE, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. should be good. good. So definitely join us next week for uh, whatever live streams we do from NAB. We will have lots of information. Uh, we want to bring you interesting and cool things we discover at the show as we're going around and yep. being interested ourselves. Uh, definitely stop by our booth if you're attending NAB. Uh, we'll be at South Upper Hall, 6925 yep. is the booth number. All that information is on our website. We have uh, a, an events page on our website with tons of details about that stuff. Yep. Um, so definitely check that out. As always, like, subscribe, uh, submit any questions or ideas you might have to live at epifan.com as an email address. If there's any questions, you can obviously put them in the chat. Um, you know, we can address those. If you give us your contact details, we can obviously uh, get in touch with you if there's anything else. But we look forward to next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, we'll see some of you there. And uh, if you happen to watch this show and you're going to NAB, mention it to uh, myself or Dave in the booth, yeah. and we can give you a very personalized tour. Yeah, of absolutely. Stuff. Come by and ask for us. It would be great to see you there. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next week.